Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it is time for another Daily Dose of Dismal Disney. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to talk about this situation with Nelson Nelson Peltz. I yeah. just said Nelson. <laughs> Nelson Peltz. Nelson Peltz and uh, Disney stock in this proxy war and this whole thing going on because apparently he's got he's got some backup now uh, from another holdings group. Yep. And uh, I think that uh, Disney is going to be in deep trouble. This year has not been good for them. And it doesn't seem like they have any plan, uh, any way to turn things around in the immediate future. So, yeah, uh, Disney, good luck with that. We're going to talk about what this uh, means as we understand it. But I do think that uh, things could change here at the House of Mouse. So one way or another. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views. Rants, guys, you get a woohoo if you woo do. The woohoos are back. They're back on the menu. I'm here. All right. So just a real quick to tell you what's going on. Nelson Peltz is an activist investor. Right. Nelson Peltz is very good friends with Ike Perlmutter, who was the boss of Marvel. Mm -hmm. And then Disney fired Ike Perlmutter. And then Ike Perlmutter got pissed off and gave the controlling share of his uh, or the control of his shares to Nelson Peltz. Now Nelson Peltz wants a, a board seats, his group, trying group well, wants a board Well, this is the second seat. time they try to get board seats second this year. Second time. They he got a reprieve. Earlier this year, and then he was going to campaign for it, and he didn't have any more near as much control then. And Bob Iger announced they were doing layoffs, and they were doing a bunch of cuts and things to the company, and so he's like, okay, okay, I'll back off. And then after he backed off, they fired Perlmutter, and a bunch, but along with all their cuts. And now they're coming back because the stock ended up being like in the $70 range. It was really bad. Yeah. And now it's up a little bit, but they, they don't know how, you know, it's up and down right now, but it's staying in the 90s. But that went up because they got wind that Peltz was going to try to do a proxy fight again. And that's when the stock raised higher. So they're, he's doing that. Now Disney's accusing uh, the whole thing with Perlmutter as being that they have a, an ax to grind against Iger. I would argue potato, potato, because you turned around and fired Perlmutter after he was friends with Peltz and openly said he sided with Peltz and the first time. Yeah. So, you know, Potter Kettle there, Bob. And uh, now this is Ancora, Ancora Holdings Group. Yeah, yeah. Um, they are also joining in the fight. This time they are backing Peltz. They aren't trying to go against Peltz for seats. They're going to the shareholders and saying, you need to, you need to agree to have him on the board because we need somebody representing the shareholders on the board. Wouldn't it be really interesting if Ike Perlmutter wound up on the board? That'd be funny. Wouldn't that be really? That would be hilarious. Oh, but my God. That would be amazing. If they really wanted to but, stick it to Iger, that's a better yep. way to do it than Peltz. Oh, yeah. Now, if you go down here, I have the entire letter they sent out. They're sending it out to shareholders. Okay. Um, there it is if you want to read it. I will read this letter because I have not read this letter yet. I did know that they had another group involved in this. And uh, yeah, they're all going to basically. So this is a third activist group to jump in. Yeah. So they're all they're all realizing that their stock is in jeopardy. Yeah. Disney is in trouble. And uh, they got to do something. And this one's backing Peltz. Fellow shareholders, Ancora, Ancora is a shareholder of Disney because its brand, entertainment assets, and media holdings can underpin sustained value creation for decades to come. Can, can, being the key word Yeah, here. they had to make a lot of changes first. Uh, we believe Disney is saying the right things about restructuring and transforming the enterprise. Nonetheless, the addition of a shareholder representative or investor designated director uh, to the board can help ensure that these efforts are carried out in the most effective way. Basically, uh, it's all lip service, and we're going to make sure they actually do what they said they were going to do. In an effort to avert an election contest following a year of distractions and disappointing performance. That's an understatement. That is a massive understatement. We hope you join us in encouraging the board to pursue a viable compromise with Tryon Fund Management and Nelson Peltz. A degree of share... Man, how long is this? You don't have to read all of it. A uh, degree of shareholder-driven change is certainly warranted, in Disney's boardroom following an extended period of absent-minded governance, ineffective succession planning, polarizing actions, and sustained value destruction. Holy hell. Many of Disney's current directors and executives bear responsibility for lapses that have undermined the company's positioning in the exceedingly competitive and ever-changing entertainment world. While it has been argued that challenges largely stem from the tenure of Bob Chapek. Bullshit. It's been argued. I also argue that a lot of those challenges came from Iger. The board was in the driver's seat before, during, and after that time. 
The upshot is that Disney shareholders have incurred meaningful losses and the company has dramatically underperformed the S&P 500 Media and Entertainment Index over various periods, including one year, three year, and five year horizons. Bas five year horizons would have been when Iger was in there. Yes. Uh, they're saying like, even if you want to try to blame it on Bob Chapek, the board was still there and they needed to rein him in too. And they didn't do it, but they're carrying out mostly Iger's marching orders. Mostly, mm -hmm. mostly Most of the stuff Iger's was, stuff. Yeah. They're talking about the board stewardship issues have not only resulted in financial setbacks by allowing Disney to devote shareholders resources to a number of pol politicized initiatives. The board has overseen a deterioration of what was once the most unifying brand in the world. The company is increasingly dividing rather than delighting a growing number of consumers. Wow. A recent Axios Harris poll revealed that Disney is now the fifth most polarizing brand in the world, which we talked about before. <laughs> right behind FTX. <laughs> so Disney's board faces a number of pivotal decisions over the next next 12 to 24 months and is as it rebuilds consumer trust and oversees a complex transformation that includes an optimization of the streaming segment, a direct-to-consumer pivot for ESPN, the evolution of the company's film studios, and a growth plan for parks. The board will also once again need to engage in critical succession planning, having a sizable owner in the boardroom to bring the market's perspective and serve as one of the many voices would only benefit shareholders. While this type of director may not always be needed at Disney, we contend it is the right addition at this key moment in time. So what they're saying is we don't trust Disney to course correct unless we sit on them is what they're basically, basically saying. Yeah. In the last paragraph, we don't have to read about it. They're talking about somebody else attacking Pelts' efforts and stuff. But yeah, so they're out there saying this to shareholders. They are another group that is not uh, trying. And they're out there trying to tell people to back Pelts. Yeah. OK, so, yeah, so that's going on right now. And there's that. But there's other things that are happening at Disney Company. These are just like the, you know, first of many today. But that's the first thing that we're going to talk about. All right. Let's let's just rip the bandaid off. I did a video yesterday talking about how they had to cut a check for eight point five billion dollars mm -hmm. to Comcast. I don't know where they're going to get it from because I looked into it after I did the video. I wish I'd looked into it before. And in September, Disney only had 14 billion dollars in liquidity. Mm -hmm. And they had to cut a check for $8.5 billion. And they might be on the hook for another 5 to $6 billion. Depending on the way the, the you know, appraisals Valuation, come back. Yeah. yeah, the valuation comes back. Yep. Which um, I want to point out again, Morgan Stanley is doing, is doing uh, Comcast side. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, it's th this is going to – they basically – what they gave Comcast bankrolls Epic Universe. It pays for their new park to compete directly against them. So that, that's not good guys. Um, they're in another lawsuit, constant lawsuits. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the latest lawsuit that came up uh, today that apparently the technology, as I understand it, the technology they used in Beauty and the Beast, the motion capture technology that they got all kinds of awards for and blah, 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 blah. Well, the company that Disney worked with apparently didn't own it. Yeah, but that's not that's not Disney's fault, though. No, but you... In that case, that's not Disney's fault. But you throw Disney into the mix and it's just another PR black they're guy. They're using that name for money because in this case... Unless Disney was aware and they can prove Disney was aware that the company didn't own it, what they weren't misrepresenting themselves, it's really not Disney's fault. Now, I mean, I'm not legally an expert. I'm just saying I, I personally am not going to blame Disney for that if they didn't know. But if they did know, then that's that's bull crap. Oh, yeah. But they said they don't know. So we have that going on. Now they're um, the turn around. Now oh, we're, yeah, they're desperate. We're going to talk about desperation here because we've got them uh, re releasing uh, Soul Luca and Turning Red in theaters. They're also, which is weird because they didn't get, did they get theatrical? I don't think they got No, that. they didn't. Turning they were, red, they were I thought, pandemic. Well, they got a little bit of one, but they were mostly Limited. pandemic ones. So they were releasing it in theaters now because they don't have anything else to put in theaters. And they, their box office is, is absolute shit. So they're like, well, let's re-release these or put them out in theaters now. And maybe we'll make some money. Wouldn't it be weird? Wouldn't it be weird if one of those re-released movies actually it, that has been on Disney Plus for years if like Luca actually did better in a the theater than Wish, well, they might. That'll be interesting to Wouldn't see. Would that be weird? No, this is not till next year. No, but still, but they don't. But they don't have anything like leading up into the next year. They don't have. So that's why they're putting these back out because they don't know what else they're going to do. <laughs> so they're trying to get whatever they can into theaters, I guess, to, to, to try to staunch the flow of blood. But it's not going to work. It's a, that, that's like yeah. It's a band aid. It's a freaking band aid on a, a stab wound. Like it's not it's, even a stab wound. That's like they're half. Like they're, they're, they're you shot like your arm off. off and yeah, off, and they're just like trying to put a bandaid on the hole. You blew your own freaking arm off with the twelve gauge because you don't know how to shoot. 
And now you're getting the box of Band-Aids out and you're trying to patch the stub. Well, then, um, <laughs> it's not yeah, pretty work. much. So they have that going against them. And then we didn't even bring up, and I didn't pull it up in this video, but they have uh, South Carolina is uh, cutting, uh, they're, they're standing against Oh, I forgot Disney about that. Yeah. yeah. Over um, X, what, what they did with Elon Musk and the trying yeah. to, to bully him because they're like, a corporation shouldn't be trying to, you know, tank some other businesses because they don't agree with them politically and they're going too political. So they're doing, they're doing, going after them for some stuff. It's going to cost them like 150, was it? million or 105 uh, so, yeah it was some crazy number a billion i don't remember off the top of my head yeah they're divesting over the twitter spat it's going to be 105 million so, million yeah, so they said the portfolio is about 105 million of Disney debt instruments that will mature as scheduled and will not be replaced. Wow. And their statement was um, Disney has abandoned its fiduciary responsibilities to its investors and customers by joining far left activists and boycotting legal tax paying employment creating corporations to further Disney's political agenda. Um, this, this guy said uh, he said he bashed uh, Bob Iger over pulling advertising on X. Because he said multi-billion dollar corporations should not engage in boycotts designed to silence legitimate debate. Since America's founding, freedom of speech has been one of the core principles. And Disney should not engage in nefarious practices aimed at silencing those with less power and money. Well, I don't agree with less power and money. But um, they're basically, the South Carolina as a state is standing up against it. And then um, they're also in trouble because there was some kind of audit done on uh, the the old Reedy Creek. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. And not surprising to anyone, according to the audit, that they found that Disney was, you know, they, we already know that they were in trouble because they were giving out all these perks and, and park tickets and all that. So they were trying to work out some new reward system for the employees. But it, it kind of seems like if you were uh, someone higher up, you got extra stuff, And uh, according to this audit. And, you know, Disney's saying that wasn't true, but everybody kind of knew that Disney owned Reedy Creek and basically yeah, called up Disney and it. asked him how to vote. Everybody you know, knew it was it. a running you know joke that they would, you know, Reedy Creek wasn't looking at what was best for the area that included more places than just, well, Disney World, um, more businesses that were a part of it that weren't Disney owned. And instead they just did whatever Disney wanted. Um, so that was a whole other thing, which we're not going to get into that today, but that's going on. And now Disney, on top of all that, Disney has announced that they're going to do, speaking of Carolinas, in North Carolina, they had those story living communities. Like they had the one that was going to be, was it in California? Yeah. And now they announced another one that's over in, in North Carolina at re the research triangle between all these cities where there's a lot of money because there's mm -hmm. a lot of research and medical, or not medical, uh, schools, yeah. universities and such in that area. So they're offering, they're going to offer another one there. And I can tell you that the prices for the ones in California, the medium home price is about $580,000. Their starting prices are $1 to $2 million for these. And these aren't even the estate ones. They haven't put the prices out for the estate, which is the biggest ones. And it's probably going to be just as much, or if not more, in North Carolina, because the median house in this area is 800 and some thousand dollars. So it's probably going to be even higher. So there's going around finding richy rich areas, and they're trying to put down these these communities, and then their clubhouse. Like well, you, you can join the clubhouse and have all these perks. Yeah, in California, it's twenty thousand dollars for the first year and eleven thousand dollars each additional year to be oh part of their god. clubhouse. Oh my god! So uh, I'm sure it's going to be as much, if not more, in North Carolina. Isn't um, one of the developments? I thought they were going to build it in like Coachella or something, and then they were going to do another one like. Or I don't know Arizona or yeah I, they were doing some other ones too but this is yeah. like the, these these are going to be available for purchase in like 2027 or something rich but hipster communes that's what they're doing that's, Disney's yeah. going around the country finding rich areas and put putting houses down to build communities that are Disney owned and that they can constantly bilk you for money and this is what they're doing to try to st staunch the flow of blood out of Disney as they're trying to do this meanwhile what they were you know dragging their feet about doing the affordable housing they promised they were going to do and it wasn't until universal announced they were moving forward on theirs that Disney finally got you know got off the pot and and said oh yeah we're going to break ground on it but we're not actually going to do it right now and you don't hear anything else about it well that's that's what I think they're they're saying i think that the um Encora Holdings basically they're like we need somebody at Disney on the board to make sure they do what they're telling us they're going to do mm -hmm. because Disney had, I mean, Pelts basically gave them another year and said, okay, sounds like you have a plan. And then the year came and went and they didn't do any of it. And then that all the movies they had planned fa failed and you can't blame the strikes. No, they're trying to blame COVID. They're trying to blame this. Oh yeah. I love they blame COVID. On, oh, on well, Marvel. because there wasn't enough editorial oversight. And if I were Pelts or Ancora group, I'd be like, oh yeah. See what happens when you don't have oversight. 
and people like blow through millions well, and millions of dollars. Argue. It was a bunch of bullshit anyway. It was it was delayed for five. It didn't go out for like five years. I mean, after it was supposed to be started, it was supposed to be started filming in 2019 or whatever. And then the pandemic hit. It got pushed back. Whatever it ended up being, it got pushed back like five times. So bull crap because the pandemic happened. No, they had to fix it. And they had to re- they did reshoots extensively no. afterwards. They could have fixed it then. No. Yeah, they did test screens. They were terrible. They and then they basically fired Nia DaCosta. Then they threw her under the bus. They're like, "Oh, we didn't have enough oversight on her." So that's the, that's why the movie's awful, you know. Um, so yeah, I think they're basically just getting a taste of their own medicine now. I think the, the the everybody hates Disney right now. Everybody hates Disney. Everybody's coming at them. They just had to give all that money to Hulu or yeah. for Comcast for Hulu. Well, and then yeah, yeah, and that's what I was saying yesterday. Like, where do you think that money is going to come from? They're going to have to recoup that. That means they're going to jack up the Hulu mm-hmm. prices. They're going to jack up the admission to the parks. They're going to start build more of these you know rich developments. Well, these rich developments, they're just now starting to go on sale for the first one they announced, yeah. and they're not even built yet. I don't think it's just that you can go ahead and you know pre-order. You can pick floor plans and stuff now and pay, start paying for it now or whatever. It's down payment so they can build it. But they're just like, you know, announcing all the stuff that are years out so they can get money before they have to actually deliver. I think the thing is, is Disney basically Icarus itself. I think they, they wanted to get into too many things. They wanted too much too soon, too fast. Um, no, that's their higher, further, faster. Higher for, and yeah, and now they're, they're falling out of the sky. Like they're dropping and everybody sees it. Everybody sees it. You're the joke of South Park. There's nothing you can do to come back from that. We're going to wrap this up. Yes. Okay. So please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.